I will share with you today the most beautiful parable I know of. Please listen attentively until the end. In the early 1900s, two Chinese brothers emigrated to the USA. The younger one soon became a member of a feared street gang. One night, during a fight, the Chinese lad drew a knife and killed his opponent. Pursued by the police, he was seen entering the building in which his brother lived. His brother saw him, indeed, rush into his apartment with blood-stained clothes and with a knife in his hand. Help me! Save me! The police is after me! He shouted. It did not take long for his brother to understand what had happened, and seeing him in despair, he had an idea, he told him. Get undressed and exchange clothes with me. They did so, and when the police finally broke down the door, they found the older, innocent Chinese brother with a knife in his hand and wearing the blood-stained clothes. They arrested him! During the trial that followed, the innocent brother did not open his mouth in his defense and was sentenced to death. The day before his execution, he wrote the following letter to his kid brother. My brother, whom I love very much, when you will receive this letter, I would be dead, executed for the murder that you have committed in the clothes that I now wear. The only way there was for me to save you was to take your place, to take the punishment that you deserve upon myself. I am doing this gladly because you are my brother and I love you. But me dying for you would be worthless, even wrong, if you were to go on living the evil life that you have been living until now. Now, you are wearing my clothes. I demand that you live in them the way I myself would have lived in them. If you do not do so, you will be guilty of causing my death as well as that of the man you knifed. Honor the sacrifice I made for you. Dear listener, there is no better analogy that can be found that can explain in all simplicity what the basic teaching of the New Testament is. This modern parable illustrates perfectly what the gospel is. You are the younger brother in this parable and Jesus is the older one. Just like everyone else, your sins are being accumulated and on judgment day, you will have to bear the just and awful punishment that you deserve because of them. Jesus does not want this to happen to you. So he offered to take upon himself the ultimate punishment that your sins deserve. Much like the older brother did in our parable. Even though Jesus is the only much beloved son of God, he left his glorious throne in heaven and came down to earth for the very purpose of bearing in your stead the punishment your sins deserve. He accepted to wear, for a time, a lower body, that of a man, and lived among us the only sinless life that no one else managed to live while here on earth. Being sinless, he did not have to suffer and die like we all do. Suffering and death are a consequence of sin. Jesus, having lived without ever sinning and being the very person we were created for, was the only person fit to stand trial in our stead. By offering to suffer and die for the sins of all those who belong to him, Jesus satisfied God's demand that justice prevails and that sin be severely punished with death and untold sufferings. He made it possible for God the Father 
to be simultaneously just and merciful, able to forgive our sins on Judgment Day without anyone being able to accuse him of being unjust and showing favoritism. Now, God the Father can forgive all those who are covered by the blood of Jesus, those who belong to him. They most certainly also will have to be punished themselves for their sins in Hades, that is, the world of the dead. Up to a point, though, but they will be exempted from bearing the full punishment of their rebellion against God Almighty and being thrown in hell. What a wonderful salvation Jesus is offering us. What an amazing love Jesus showed us and how grateful we should all be. How could we ever hope to escape God's wrath if we refuse to respond appropriately to his splendid action of sending his beloved son to the slaughter for us? When confronted with the amazing love and sacrifice that Jesus demonstrated to us, we should all be extremely appreciative and eternally grateful. Is there any greater insult that we can make to God's face, any greater sin we can do against him, than taking this matter lightly and not responding with gratitude, with love and eternal submission to his son for his self-sacrifice? Not appreciating what God's son did for us, not loving him wholeheartedly and not submitting unreservedly to him, is unforgivable. All other sins can be ultimately forgiven, but refusing to respond to the unbelievable sacrifice that Jesus did for us, refusing to become a staunch and faithful follower of his, will never be forgiven. If you do not wish to be charged for your sins yourself and for bringing about the death of the Savior, you ought to exchange the clothes of your heart and soul that are stained with sin, with Jesus' spotless clothes, and live from now on as he would have lived in them, or at least sincerely try hard to do so. What God requires of you is written in the New Testament. The Bible is God's inspired written word. Read it every day of your life and do what it teaches. What must you do? Pray and beg the Lord Jesus to send his spirit in your life and heart that he may start changing for you from inside out and to teach you to live a life worthy of him. Cooperate with him and change what needs to be changed in your life. Live a holy life from now on. Read the Bible every day of your life and let God's word change your way of thinking and your lifestyle. Prove your love for God and for your neighbor with your deeds. An important detail. Let us imagine for a moment that the police did not catch the Chinese murderer that evening and that having escaped punishment, he was caught with remorse for the evil that he did and changed completely his way of living. And let us say that he became the best person he could be, doing much good to others. Many years later, when the police would finally catch up with him and bring him to justice, would he be exonerated for the murder that he had committed? Of course not. Regardless of all the good that he has done, justice demands that he bears the guilt and punishment for his evil action. He murdered someone and must pay for his crime. Likewise, if you do not accept to change clothes with Jesus, and if you were to start living from now on an exemplary life, doing as much good as you can, thus hoping to make up for your wrongdoings, will you be exempted from being punished for whatever sins you have committed in life? No way. Becoming a good person is good, but not good enough to save you from the consequences of your evil actions. 
Your only hope to escape hell is to exchange the clothes of your heart that are stained by your sins with the spotless clothes of Jesus and live accordingly. Then and only then will God pass over your sins and forgive you. In any case, by ignoring Jesus Christ, you commit the greatest and most unforgivable sin that you can make, that of failing to respond as you should to the sacrifices that he made in order to save you from suffering in hell. You must surrender your spirit, your heart and life to him. You must submit to him in every way and learn to love him. Only if you become a staunch follower of Jesus Christ will you be saved. Once that happens, start reading the words of Jesus daily. Whatever God wants you to know, to believe and to put into practice is written in the New Testament. Study it daily until you die. Jesus did say, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that has come out of the mouth of God. That is in Matthew 4, 4. Just as you must find time every day to eat food, so you must make time to feed yourself daily with the words of God. I would say for at least half an hour every day. Otherwise, your spirit will become atrophic, weak, and you will be easily polluted again with sin and with the false teachings that prevail in the world. And do not become religious. God cannot be fooled by playing church. Do not trust the salvation of your soul to churches. They can be mistaken, and many are, and you may end up being brainwashed and poisoned by them. Learn only from the very words of God that Jesus taught and that were written down by his chosen apostles 2,000 years ago. By doing so, you will be taught the truth, only the truth, all the truth that God wants you to know and follow. And by putting it into practice, you will live. Thank you.